Oops. Hello everyone. Uh welcome, welcome to the stream. Good afternoon everyone. Um I'm Playbox. I'm the competitive I'm a competitive player in Rainbow Six. I've been playing Rainbow Six for about four years now, and um I'll be the host for today's workshop alongside the next four uh Rainbow Six workshops to come for the beginner level. Um this is organized by the Rainbow Six Singapore Community R6SC for short, in collab in collaboration with Scapes Community Rallies. Now, um, throughout this entire broadcast, if you guys have any questions about Rainbow Six that you would like to ask, feel free to write it down in the chat, like the Twitch chat, and also feel free to put it in the workshop chat if you signed up for the workshop today. Feel free to use the Discord channel, uh, the, Dis the Rainbow Six Singapore Community Discord channel, and use the workshop chat there, and uh, you can interact with me that way and ask any questions you may be uh, curious about. Um, if you guys... Oh, hi however, I strongly suggest that you only um, ask questions regarding the topic um, for today, which is the introduction and uh, just some basic questions, uh, basic topics. So just ask within those topics so that we don't, um, you know, skip topics for next, the next session in 25 July, for example. Um, so 
also, 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 new news, new news. There's going to be a bonus for everyone who signs up uh, for these workshops. So if you attend three, just three out of five of the workshops, it does not have to be in any order. You'll be receiving a bonus 2,400 Rainbow Six in-game credits. So uh, I highly suggest that you sign up because it's free and you get credits on top of it. And hopefully you get more MMR and you can boost your rank up in the ladder, you know, maybe. And also, uh, if you enjoyed today's, uh, today's broadcast session, um, feel free to sign up for the future workshops. As I said, you'll be receiving a bonus. And at the same time, you know, you're always welcome to learn more about the game. And yeah. Uh, so without further ado, I guess, I, is there any questions in the chat? No? If there's no questions, I guess let's get started with uh, the session today. How about that? Just give me a moment. Uh, give me a second. Just sorry. All right. Ah, yeah. Okay. So um, just a brief run through. Also, let me just give the slide. So yes, this is a bit more. Oh yeah, just saying. If there's any issues with audio or uh anything, feel free to just like put it in the comments or anything. I'll be able to. I'll be able to see it. So don't be shy. If anything, I'm the shy one, so <laughs> cool, calm, collected, boys. All right, so a bit more about who I am, as I've said a bit earlier, is um, my name's Geraldo Goana. That's my full name. I also go by the tag Playbox. Uh, I'll just use my cursor. I think you all can see my cursor, so. I go by Playbox in-game. Um, I've ranked Diamond across every season um, that I've played uh, Rainbow Six. For those who may not be so into Rainbow Six, um, up till a few months back, uh, Diamond is basically the highest rank you can get in the game until recently when they added a new rank. So uh, I've been playing for four years now and I actually play for a team that uh, I would not like to disclose if that's okay with everyone. I'm playing for a team right now and my role in the team is that I am the in-game leader and I also mainly play utility flex operators like uh, Dokebi, Gridlock, Nomad, um, Capital, basically those those kinds of utility stuff, you know. I think you all know about those. And um, if you think I'm a really pretty handsome male, feel free to follow my socials. Uh, for Instagram, it's Geraldo G's, basically my name with a G's at the back. And for Twitter, it'd be at Playbox Arena. All right, I woke up early for this. Thank you for waking up, Rin. <laughs> I woke up early. <laughs> All right, so this is a bit more on the breakdown for today. So it'll be, we'll be covering uh, graphic settings and a general walkthrough of the Rainbow Six game flow. And at the same time, we'll be explaining a bit more on the attack and defense. And moving on to part two, it'd be maximizing prep phase and basics of positioning. So how we separate the categories, it'll be about 15 minutes or so for theory and then 45 minutes of in-game practice with a short Q and A, and then it moves on back to you know fifteen minutes, and then yeah, yeah, y'all get it right. There's nothing wrong with anything, right? No audio issues, nothing. All right, let's move on next. So part one, let's get started. So uh, what exactly is Rainbow Six? Uh, it's a, basically a, just a five v five competitive first person shooter. Uh, you know, there's attackers and defenders. Uh, there's multiple operators with uh, different gadgets. So it's basically like a mini MOBA, like League of Legends or Dota or whatever, and um, scale it down, scale it to a FPS kind of genre. It's like Overwatch, but like not. Yeah. And uh, yeah, basically you have destructive environment, kind of like Battlefield, where you can, you know, break through walls. There's, you know, different multiple floors instead of like, you know, in CSGO, where there's like a plain field, usually in most part. Uh, Rainbow Six has a bit more verticality in the game. So um, now we'll be talking more about the settings. So for the settings, um, these are just some basic guidelines to the settings. You don't have to follow it, but this is just my general guideline as a baseline like um this is where you should start with your settings so um feel free to whip up your phone to take a picture if not you can always go back and watch the vod because this vod will be saved for i think three months under the escape channel so y'all don't have to worry about that there's no rush um next this will be the second portion feel free to look through 
Um, also, one one thing I would like to note is for things like shadow reflection, if you put it on low, low basically means off. I don't know why, but just keep that in mind. Okay, right, now for this, for those of you who may have a bit of a lower end uh, computer, um, the the settings that would really help uh, help you run the game smoother would be things like texture quality and anti-aliasing. So by default, if possible, try to have your texture quality at least set on medium so it won't be so blur. And for anti-aliasing, I highly, highly, highly suggest you to play it off because it really makes the imaging really much like it's, it's, whew, it's huge. So yeah, but if you are unable to run this, uh, feel free to just play texture on low. I've done that for two years straight before I got a better PC. And for anti-aliasing, same thing. You can turn it on to TAA, which is on the left side. Actually, I don't have the arrow, but if you click on the left side, the render scaling and TAA sharpness option will pop up. I recommend sharpness set on max. Render scaling, lower it to as much as you need in order to run the game smoother. Yeah. Always know that, you know, a smoother experience is better than having nicer graphics, especially in like competitive shooters across the board. Just personally. So a bit more about the game flow. This is very basic, no pressure, especially for those who uh, signed up for the workshop. There's no no need to stress. You're not trying to impress Shroud or anything. I'm just a kid online, all right? We're just trying to learn together, trying to build a cohesive learning environment. Everyone can just cool, calm, collect it a bit. So for attackers, basically these are the split between the different phases. Oh, sorry for hitting the mic. Uh, different phases in the game. So basically there's three phases. Um, so for attackers, it'd be the operator selection. Defenders is the same. You pick what you want to play. Uh, except the only difference is drone phase and preparation phase. So drone phase is when the attackers get to drone the bomb, find where the bomb sites are, where the enemies are playing, so on and so forth. While the defenders get to reinforce walls, break open walls, you know, basically set up their bomb sites to defend. Um, so for the attackers, your general guideline is you just want to uh, attack the bomb site after you've located it, and you know, come up with a mini plan, push it together. And while defenders, you just try to prevent the attackers from entering your bomb site. So for attacker side is a bit more in detail, but not really. So you basically you pick an operator that you think would be best for that situation. Um, no need to stress so much about this because in Rainbow Six, you can usually pick similar lineups across the board. Like you can have the same set of five operators across the board. I will be talking about this in the next workshop. So go, go, go next workshop. Um, maximizing of use of drones. So basically, um, as an attacker, you wouldn't want to just throw in your drone, lose it immediately. You kind of want to save it for when you need it so that, you know, you can get the extra information when you need it rather than you just, you know, waste out your utility too fast. Um, and always work with your teammate. That's the third point, which is figuring out with your teammate. Always try to work with your teammate and play together, you know, always help one another. Say, hey, do you need to watch this? I'll cover your back, you know, things like that, simple stuff. And also try to get a diffuser planter as an attack because it's preferred as in once you've got the diffuser planted you have the advantage of being able to just defend that one small little box as compared to having to fight the whole map three floors pew pew bang you know it can relax a bit you know it's much much nicer for defending side basically you pick the objective that you want to play now there's actually three game modes uh mainly in this game sorry i need to adjust my necklace uh, there's three game modes in this game. Um, however, today we are only and across the workshops we'll only be covering uh, bomb. So now bomb is actually the most commonly played map, and if you watch pro league or any of the competitions, they all use bomb. So we'll be going through that the most default. Uh, things to take note is how you can efficiently hold your space. You don't always want to reinforce every wall you see. Sometimes you want to have a rotation, like have a small hole. You know, makes it more dynamic. And um, you just understand where your attackers are coming from. There's actually a compass, so you don't y'all can chill. Just say north, south, east, west. If you all don't know the specific callout, so your job is just to prevent the attackers from getting the diffuser down, as I said earlier. Because by putting the diffuser down, it suddenly s s shifts into like an attacking side, um, fa in, in favor for the attacking side. So yes, I don't think there's any questions, right? There's a lot of people with pink names in the chat. I actually can't read it's a lot uh to those in the workshop in the discord if you all have any questions you can raise it up i'll answer maybe one or two as we set up the custom lobby that i'll actually be doing right now so give me a moment um to those in the workshop if you have not added me 
in the in Uplay, um, please do add me. It's in the workshop chat tab. It's playbox dash. I will be showing it in a brief moment. Give me a second. Give me a choto mate a second. Y'all have to stop flirting. Wait, what? Am I that pretty? Oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah, so um, please add me. Like, now. <laughs> if you haven't. I've, I've got some of you guys. So, uh, it's calm. It's chill. Everything's alright. I I know there is um, a lot of berry people. Oh, there we go. Strawberry. We got strawberry. We have Westberry. We got, I am assuming this guy is also inside of this thing, right? I would assume so, Mr. Soft Rock. What's up, what's up? Can y'all actually see my U playlist? I'm not even sure. I'm not, I don't have my tab up. I'm shy now. Make sure I don't have any naughty, naughty chats. No, I don't. Okay, it's calm, it's chill. Everything's calm, everything's cool. Haha, <laughs> y'all can't see stuff. <laughs> Wait a minute, my rank, it's a color? Sorry, what? <laughs> um, Fox, if you can set up who goes to which side, that would be nice. Also, um, I'm not alone in this, so just a shout out to people who are helping out with this uh, to run this broadcast is one will be um, Wenselis or Anointed King, I think that's your Discord tag. Um, he'll be helping us with uh, the Twitch chat and so on. Uh, Hipster Fox is going to be helping us to moderate the people inside. The, the, uh, la, la, la. He'll be moderating the participants. Yes. All right. All right. Rin Raichu. Where are you? Do I have you added? Oh, no, you added me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Invite Fox as well. Got it. Give me a second. Rin, Rin Raichu has been invited. Go, 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 let's go. I guess in this short, brief moment, as things are not so um, set up yet, if you guys have questions, really, really, just feel free to write down in the Twitch chat and I'll respond to it when I can, and which is pretty much almost all the time I can respond. So don't worry about that. If there's no stupid questions, it's fine. I will try not to laugh at the very least. No promises, no promises, no promises. But hey, it's effort, man. Come on. All right. What's this? What do you do if your vertical and horizontal sense is in the same? You'll be surprised. Uh, don't don't mind it. Like, um, having your sensitivity is really preference. I I will be very honest with you. A lot of people. Um, there's actually a pro. Uh, I'll just use the local context. So the current number one team in the entire of North APAC, which is basically Asia Pacific minus um, the India side um, and Australian side. One of the best players right now playing in the best team. He's called Speak Easy. He's actually playing the weirdest sense I've ever seen in my life. Okay, he plays like 15-6 or something like that with like 60 whatever ADS. Don't, don't worry about it. It's really, really preference. You don't... Don't sweat it, honestly. All right, gin and tonic. Feel free to unmute and chat with us. Yes, yes, yes. People who are participating, you get to hear my voice twice over. Yes. All right. Let me just add. Um. Sorry, gin and gin and tonic. Even oh, gin and tonic. All right. You've been added, my man. Sorry, I can't read. What? Okay. Oh, so many things. Uh, wait. Give me a moment. Uh, what happens if my drone gets destroyed? You lose a drone. I mean, <laughs> no. Nah, but in in in, honestly, you try not to lose your drone for free. Usually, um, this is a general guideline where you have a drone, you know, positioned in a in a position in a space where you know you have teammates who are able to capitalize on the info rather than just like scanning the guy and like ah oh! you can choose not to scan it you tell your teammates hey um let's say the next room is called penthouse you can hey in penthouse he's behind the shelf and that way your teammate can make use of that call out rather than you just like you know scanning scanning yeah and sometimes you can just sit your drone down and cool down. yeah you don't have to do much with it honestly but i want points do you want in round points or do you want mmr points hmm 
Hmm? Win rounds or win games, baby? Wait, win points or win games, baby? What maps will the custom games be using? We'll be using a uh, quick match playlist or ranked. So um, the settings will be in a 3-3 format. So um, basically, uh, both sides get to play attacker side three times and the defenders get to play three. So you, you, get, you get to play attacking three times and you get to play defending three times without a switch. So you guys can like, you know, continue to work on your things on attack if something's not working out. You can discuss, you have three rounds. And then it switches off and then boom, boom, bam, bam. And no, we're not using Pro League settings or anything. Y'all can calm down. Win, lane, lose, games. I don't play much MOBAs, but yes. Yes. What maps will be play? Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll be playing Cafe. Um, a bit. Oh, yeah. I forgot to change the map. Just give me a moment. Sorry for uh, people watching the stream. It's a bit uh, slow. I hope you can give us a bit of time. Yeah, but we we'll play. We'll be playing cafe now. Cafe is um one of the more newer reworked maps, but it's also quite basic. Quite you think Rainbow Six and you think generic. You think cafe. So it's one of the easier maps. So we're gonna start out chill, depending on the progress of this workshop and the people participants. We might switch around the maps, but uh, definitely we're not gonna pick out like um, too strange of maps. Like you're not gonna change up the map that much. Let's go hijack this and go learn League. Hey man, never know next year at League of Legends workshop. I'm just saying I might be a pro. I might be I don't know I don't know watch League of Legends. I might be the caps. Is G two cap still good? I don't know. I can be the. Yes. Why didn't I think of that? Play with, with that. Is it better to play with points on or off? Um, now, playing with points on is an advantage. If you are practicing for competitions or uh, you strive to be a pro player, you can turn it off. So you can get used to the, the HUD. You can get used to uh, using audio cue instead of like having to see, oh, plus 100 oh, on like plus 50 down. Whoa, I'm insane. You have to hear audio cue. Like you hear like the guy falling, like, Ugh! you know, these kind of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that, that's a bit uh, advanced. In my opinion, if you're still learning the game or you're just trying to, you know, level up, uh, get the feel, get the gist, um, just turn on points. It's fine. I, I turned off points. I have points on now only during um, practice games with my team like scrims scrimmages. Uh, we will turn it off. Of course Me listening to both discord and stream echo 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 echo, echo. All right, looks like uh, give me a moment. Yeah, we might be struggling getting some of the players to join the lobby, but It'll be fine. I don't think time is that bad. So everything's calm. Everything's chill. Um, <laughs> if anything, we might have to cut down a few rounds. Not sure exactly. Uh, we'll try to keep it within the two hours so you guys can um, enjoy your lunch and not have to stare at me too long. Yes. Usri, use Usri Shaggy. I'll add him. I got him. Give me a second. Usri, Usri Shaggy, Usri Shaggy, Usri Shaggy. You've been added, my man. Actually, if anything, um, Quicks or uh, Hipster Fox, since you are also in the lobby. Actually, can you guys add the guys and uh, invite them? I think it'll probably be easier. I'm a brand new level zero point five. So am I, dude. Don't worry. Don't look at that. Just saying, guys, I know I said I was diamond, but like, and now you're like, oh, this guy, he's just rankless and he's trying to teach me. Oh no. Well, I've got reasons. All right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm doing scrims. All right. I don't play rank much. I play a lot of scrimmages. Like, um, fighting against other pro teams. That That's usually what I do. Analyze games. Fight pro teams, analyze games, fight pro teams. That's 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 my life. 
I'm not a smurf, man. Yep, facilitating the min. Alright, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just bought the game and haven't even downloaded it. Need a coach? I know a guy. Goes by Playbox. It's kind of handsome too, I don't know. You know. Uh, let me see. Smurf Playbox with Smurf. Do you know Smurfing's not allowed anymore? Just saying. But no one knows. Don't, don't tell anyone. Can I join? Ah, uh, I'm not so sure. I don't think so. Sorry. Uh, I think someone, one of the admins, moderators can probably add in the link to the sign up. Um, so uh, uh, for Alice, you can actually sign up for the workshops. Uh, since we have a bit of time now, you can sign up for the workshops, and we have five dates counting today. It'd be twenty five July, fifteenth of August, 29th of August, twenty sixth September, and third October. All at twelve p.m. to two p.m. Um, if you sign up, let me, since we have time now, right, if you sign up, just saying, you guys get a bonus, okay, I don't get this bonus, alright, oh, come on, man, like, oh, come on, but basically the bonus is, if you sign up for three out of five days of the workshop, you get a bonus, I think it's 2,400, let me check that, 2,400 credits, that's like, Twenty six dollars, I think. I, pff, I don't know. That's money, man. That's free credit. That's stonks, man. So, uh, do sign up for if you sign up for three out of five, you have to participate. Don't just sign up and go like ah, bye bye. Uh, participate like all these very lovely people, and then you get credits. You get credits and bonus, bonus on top of bonus, right? Wow, Playbox doing doing God's work right now. You will know my Discord, and if you once you know my Discord, if you have any further questions you want to ask outside of quote unquote class, you can always DM me, and I will reply to you when I'm free. Which is, you know, I'm still schooling, so it'll be after school, if not after my scrims or whatever. If I have the time, I will definitely get back to you guys. I don't like notifications, so I'm forced to reply. But just DM me if you guys. Oh yes, 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 yes. Everyone's in. I think we're delayed. Just a bit, but Maybe that's alright. That's alright. If everyone ready, I can start. Can I get a double bonus if I sent you some toe picks? Don't tell anyone. Maybe yes. Alright, so if everyone's ready, I'll be starting. Fox, everyone's ready in the chat. Can you... Fox, if everyone's ready, can you give me a, like a thumbs up or something in the Twitch chat? Like, yeah, everyone's ready or something. Are you guys all going to be in the same workshop room? Are you guys all going to be in the same workshop room? Yes, yes, yes. Are you saying yes to me or yes to... No? Yes, I'll bail out. Good night, nice try. Oh yeah, quick tip. If you guys want to be an insane aimer, knife the ground whenever you... No, don't, don't do it. No, no, no. <laughs> it's a joke, dude. My toenails just got a fresh cut. Sick. Happy for you on that. Oh my gosh, mom, I'm on Twitch. Hey, same! Same! Dude, I'm on Twitch. Yeah. Sorry that you guys have to just see my side profile of my head. I am reading screen, so. And I haven't adjusted my hair, okay? I came back from the toilet. I was like, ah, oh, it's 11.59. I gotta go on, so. Don't mind. Don't mind the whoosh. I've got that. Hit set hairband going on for me. Don't mind it. Just waiting. Could you get some bags for the fifth session? Hey man, if you're paying for the haircut. Beautiful center parting. Hell yeah, dude. I don't really know how the song goes. I always know there's that, that egg dude. We're a bit behind schedule. I'm not even gonna lie, but... I mean, let's see some good games. Yeah, let's see some. Just saying, it's uh, if I go quite a bit, um, try to understand that I have like three thousand three jobs right now. I need to spectate, which you know, poop poop beep beep, fifteen buttons to click. Bam bam, Twitch chat, boom. Make sure my everything's working. Bam, adjust my center hair, and then, as yeah, yeah it's just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. You accept bits? I accept PayPal. I'm 
just kidding. Yo, since we have free time, follow my Instagram. No, I, mean, I don't do much there. I eat cashews. I have a YouTube, but I just eat cashews for 10 seconds. Don't worry about it. Uh, Waiting on the last guy. All calm. Hope that everyone is at least having um a nice little morning. Afternoon. Self-promotion. Hey, man. It's about the grind, man. I don't eat cash. Cashews won't pay for themselves, dude. Come on. Cashews don't pay for themselves, man. Yeah, if I can get, like, a peanut sponsor, I've made it in life, man. Job done, dude. I'll just get pimples, but hey. Alright, waiting on last. Is that guy adding me? No, right? You're inviting Fox? Yeah, okay, good. Oh, sicko mode. Provide intel? What? So, what can I do to... What can... Eh? So what can I do to better my aim? Honestly, um, a bit controversial. So it's like, uh, it's up to you, right? If you want to use Aim Lab, basically Aim Trainers, right? Like Aim Lab, uh, Kovac. I personally used Kovac quite a bit. Um, for people who don't play much FPS, it's a very good way of at least understanding, um, your mouse movement, like flicking, like pew pew, bang 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 bang. It's just to, yeah, it helps generally. Um, if you are experienced already, I still recommend it. If you only have like five minutes to warm up, I would prefer using Kovac to warm up than tea hunting in my opinion. Because it, it, it's one of the more effective ways to just completely wake your arm up. That's, that's for me at least. If you already have good aim, you just need to wake your arm up. So yeah. And also, uh, when you use aim trainers or your tea hunting, huge tip, right? Huge tip is don't, um, what do you, what do you call it? Don't. Try to be bolo or simple from CS or I don't know who else exists, but don't flick as fast as you can. How fast you shoot doesn't matter, right? If you're not going to hit your shots, there's no point. Always start slow. Make sure you hit. So example for Kovac, try to hit 100% accuracy and then go as fast as you can. Like slowly increase the speed, go faster and faster and faster and faster. And then um, try to balance. Find the best balance, like maybe try to aim for an 80% accuracy, but really fast, you know, these kind of things. Oh, y'all can see my hands. I didn't know that. What's up? I can do this worm thing. Alright. Can't wait to get effed in the ass by all the champions on the other team. Hey, Rain, it's chill, man. Come on. It's chill, man. Everyone here, here to learn. You have this guy called Shoria. He's not great. He's quite bad. No, I'm just kidding. I love you, Shoria. My man. He's my uncle. Go download Aim Labs. It's free. Yeah, it's free. It's really good. And yeah, basically get Aim Labs. It's free. If you if you like it, Kovac. Kovac has more um customization. I like it personally, and it's cooler. And I already spent money. I might as well use it, right? It's about to rain in Sembawang. Oh no. I like rain. It's pretty bright here. No, come on, quicker, 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 quicker. We need to go. We need to start. We are behind schedule by 20 minutes. Oh, but it's chill. I don't know. What is Kovac? Kovac is pew, pew, bang, bang. You see box, pew. You see box, pew. Box, pew. Oh, you can do strafe training. Oh, I don't know what we're, we're waiting on the last, but basically in this time, I can um tell you guys something about aiming. In a lot of games, you have. I'm. I, I'm sure some of you guys from the Scape community. I'm. Not, I don't think everyone here is a Rainbow Six avid Rainbow Six player. So, just a tip is, um, there's different things that come into aiming. Oh, we're in. Never mind. I'll. I'll dive that deeper. Someone reminds me in the chat. If everyone's ready, Fox, can you give me a go in the Twitch chat? Can I one v five in this game? Ready. Yes. But no, it's a very team game. Like if you cannot 1v5 in CS, this game is harder, man. Go, go, yes, go, 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 go. Yo, I don't want nobody looking at, I don't want anybody stream sniping, yeah, no, 
No stream sniping. You can what? You can stop watching the stream. You can stop watching the stream. Um, Fox will inform you guys. Check it out. Fox will tell you guys when to turn stream back on. No, stay in, just AFK. I need the numbers, man. Nah, it's calm. Um, so for today, we'll be just, uh, so this first part, the people just spectating. Yeah, they're picking some questionable, very questionable operators, but, uh, this first practical session is more of just like a wake up, you know, like, um, you know, get the feel, get the feel of the game, just, you know, get the, mm, of the game, nothing much, too in-depth, pretty, pretty calm. Um... Defenders, protect your bombs from being so, oh, no, uh, the multitasking. There we go. So, um, let's see. So, as you guys can see right now, this is called the preparation phase. So, in this preparation phase, sorry, let me lower my game volume a bit so that you guys can um, listen to my voice. So as you can, if you guys can see, a lot of them are going with uh, reinforcements, and not to say that is wrong, but um, as you learn the game more and you progress deeper in, you'll learn that there's a lot more to holding a bomb site, like opening holes. Some holes you go through, some holes is a vault, some holes you go crouch, some holes it's just to throw C4 or whatever. It's not so yeah, just you know. So as you can see, this is cafe. Cafe has three floors. It's a very Rectangular map. There's not much extensions, you know. No, no real you know, spoopy stuff. So right now we are seeing five guys stacking up over here. Uh, usually you don't see this so much in, um, you know, play because oh, it looks like this is the first contact. But usually you don't see this so much in play because when you stack up, you tend to how do how do I put this? When you stack up. The most important thing when you stack up is to be able to trade, which is right now, this is an issue that the attackers are facing where Yuzri, the Legion player, gets one kill and isn't able to... The teammates aren't able to follow up and get the frag, the retrades. Right now, Wasp Barry gets the retrade. So what I mean by trading is when... For example, you have a teammate die in front of you, you have a teammate behind to quickly be able to finish off that enemy, right? Like. Don't just die and then wait and wait and wait. You try to cover up for your teammate. So example, I'm following my teammate. He dies. I will immediately take his position, clear the enemy, and job done. Make it clean, right? If the game audio is too loud, uh, please tell me as well. I won't know. So. so right now, if I go on a overview, you'll see that Example right now, you see Strawberry, right? Pushing once. Now, in a situation like this, it'd be best if the player on the top right, you'll see, that's Mute. It's one of the more useful operators inside of the game. You would tend to be able to hold a cross, uh, like a, you know? These are more advanced stuff. Uh, just the cross, the cross is a bit, you know, in the middle. So I won't really be covering much on that. Today we just try to focus more on getting people to play new settings and figure things out here and there. Um, if you guys have questions about like aspect ratio, FOV, I can cover that today. Anything regarding the game settings like uh, aspect ratio, you know, shadows, all this, um, I will be covering settings today. So, yes. Yes, there are also settings that give you a bit more of a tactical advantage. So, Attackers need to yeah, if you're curious, you can always f you know, can. feel free to ask. So right now we're seeing Alice playing this newest operator. In terms of learning this game, I would say that the most important first um, to people who play MOBAs, I think y'all will understand this, which is try to understand what different Attackers operators do in this game. Bomb. So in League of Legends, it'd be like understanding the different champions or you know stuff like that. So in this game, try to understand what different characters do. It takes quite a while. Some people takes you know maybe a week. Some people take two weeks, three weeks. But 
uh, you don't really have to focus so much on it because uh, slowly you'll learn. And if you're new, I also highly suggest that you don't just play second, you don't just play one operator, you try to play as many as you can, get the best feel of the game. Yeah, so right now they're gonna be switching off and playing in different channels. Now, same thing from the attackers, they're all spawning from the same side. Uh, I suggest not to do so. It's not very effective. This will be probably changed when we approach the second phase. So, um... In this... Oh, uh, no, that's, that's for a different topic. That's a different workshop. That will be... I forgot which one. I think that is... 29th August workshop where I'll be talking more about the lingo in this game so tune into that so now we can see the attackers are pushing very slow they're not really using the drone so much right now we only see soft rock you know having a drone right here right now this is good this is good you're giving information to your team however losing your drone so easily I I wouldn't say it's 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 very you know that great now that's a free kill uh, I highly suggest if you're defending, if the enemies aren't giving you any pressure, you just cool down, cool, calm, collect, and relax because you, as a defender, the less time there is in a round left, the lesser the time there is in a round. Oh, this guy is crazy. <laughs> the lesser time there is in a round, the more it turns to a defending side advantage 80% of the time. So keep that in mind as a defender. So, men's Sarah right now playing the pistol. I'm not so sure. It looks like the so right now you'll see here the diffuser has been dropped. Um, in most cases you would like to have the defenders position themselves in a in a way that they can watch the diffuser. You know because if the attackers can't get the diffuser to plant, they lose if they run out of time. So as you saw just now, soft rock had a very nice drone. Sartfrog had a very nice drone in a sense where you don't always need to drone in as in find a bomb site or like rush the bomb, whatever, right? You don't have to find people. You can often leave it at positions like this to watch your flank. So let's say you have a teammate that's dead or even if he's not dead, you can say, hey, can you hop onto my drone? And then after they hop onto their drone, they can go like, yeah, okay, I'm on your drone now. Then, you know, things are much nicer. You don't have to care so much about your booty being clapped from the back, so... This guy's crazy! Who's he? With the Barney picture? Bruh, this guy... This guy is mad. You sign him out. He should do the workshop, not me. It's crazy. Now, uh, just a tip as well. When you have man advantage, just like in every other game, right? If you have man advantage, uh, as in first person shooters, if you have man advantage, I highly suggest if you have the time to set up cross angles, like, let's say there's, oh man. Let's say there's a guy here, right? Look at this pen. Can y'all see the pen? I'm looking at the stream. There is a bit of delay, so this will probably look very stupid for about 20 seconds. Yeah, let's say there's a pen. And you have two guys, right? This is the enemy. The pen's the enemy. You have one guy here, Defenders, protect your one guy here. Being defused by so that if the enemy walks up, Bam, bam, boom, bop, bam. If y'all don't understand, I understand because I have very bad analogy. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, type that out. I can explain it in text. It'll probably be better if you guys are curious. So, uh, yo, what do you mean, lol, dude? Hey, it makes sense, man. A boom and a bat. Really, just try to have um, play with your teammates. It's the most important in a lot of team games. You just try to understand what your teammates are doing. Inform your teammates first what you are doing, and they will inform what they are doing, and then try to figure something out between each other. Like, oh, I'll watch your staircase. You just watch the door or something like that. Right? It's it, it's it's gonna win you a lot a lot of rounds. So now we see the attackers, five guys stacking up again on attack. Not really. I don't suggest it so much because let's say as you can see on the top left on my screen right now you see there's windows if you break open those windows as an attacker even if you are not 
taking the space like you're not gonna enter it it doesn't matter by opening these windows you scare the defender to you know stray away from peeking it anymore or taking the space so just a small tip small tip that we won't be covering in this workshop but just a small tip better than if you kill one of them it's a 4v5 yeah definitely just play around your teammates really just trust your teammates a bit more as long as there's mutual trust everything works out for the most part at least so now this is a lion gadget it's one of the more unique ones where if a defender runs around you know gets scanned i'll be covering more about operators in the next workshop Ooh, unlucky so now this is very nice as you can see it from um wasberry wasberry is this guy immediately when his teammate was getting shot wasberry went to you know cover the teammate immediately goes for the trade this is very very nice from mr wasberry over here now softworks in a bit of a pickle he gets down now this is something i personally don't recommend as there is no coordination this is when you don't play with a teammate you tend to get punished a lot like this same with um Rin, where if you push alone you won't have a teammate able to cover you in case uh in case you die right try to have a teammate to cover up your you know little errors i would like to suggest that for beginner players especially try to play around teammates play in pairs for example or trios try not to s play solo only play solo once you you know you get very used to playing with teammates and you can trust your own individual um uh, capability then you can experiment and try it out definitely worth now um for this something that would be great to note is if you have teammates which are dead uh, they can't do anything else except spectate so what i suggest is have them to watch cameras or whatever cameras is left whatever drone that's left so that you can get they can feed you free information and you know you don't have to worry about certain flanks stuff like that so now they're just entering together this is very nice considering the angles aren't really being covered it's still very nice to see that you know strawberry and Jin are both playing together in pairs as you can see Jin gets the trade as well which is very very nice to watch well that's unlucky <laughs> that's unlucky um so over there uh one thing to note is that just now Jin and strawberry the last two attackers it was very nice you know um strawberry goes in first trust that Jin is able to cover and then you know Jin immediately kills the guy killing strawberry and then you know it, it's a lot smoother that way the for the last guy it's a bit of unlucky you know that's wall bang that's just what rainbow six is um to those who have not tried it before uh it doesn't happen often it's 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 usually a bit of luck a bit of you know they have the information hey this guy's behind that wall you can try wall banging so you know stuff like that um in most games there is wall banging so but in this game it's a bit different a lot of things can be wall bang anything that is made of wood or like plaster like some of the walls which are made of plaster Attackers you can just brrr, the wall has a hole you know stuff like that it's a pretty cool game pretty cool game Attackers have located a bomb. i play the game so gonna be cool like me hell yeah play the game So now we see that the defenders are going back to the bottom side of the map and you know for the most part it worked out for them so this is another thing y'all can try where if you f are figuring out how to hold the bomb site you know how to step up try if you can try to remember what worked and do it again you know if it works do it again if there's adjustments to be made you know adjust like hey this wall we reinforced it but the enemies didn't even push from here in the first place then that's when you can go like maybe we don't need it you know stuff like that so it's nice it's, it's it'll be good to pay attention oh hello wong hello hello welcome to the stream dude i always see you around the discords oh, that's a sneaky beaky right there whatever that was i think it's a proximity mine so now let's see where the attackers are heading towards ah this is very nice you see as um they are working in pairs sorry where are the rest the rest are on the balcony working in pairs this is very nice to see from the attackers they are actually adapting and i think this is very interesting see now that the 
this is a bit of should I go overview? Yeah, I'll just go in the overview. Sorry if you all if anything happens, but sorry to cut. As you can see, right? If you look at the outlines. Oh sorry. Oh no. Oh that was very close. Ooh, clean. Alright. So over here you can see the outlines on the defenders. Red will be the defenders. A lot of them are very split up. Now the reason for that would be because the attackers are very split up. So something to you know keep in mind is if the Oh Oh Soft Rock! He's crazy! He's cracked. This guy's nuts. But basically is if the attackers split up, example, east west, the defenders would also tend to go east west, you know? This is very nice from Gin and Tonic. I didn't catch it, sorry. But this is nice. They were just giving info. Hey, they have a shield in front. If you push him from the back, shoot his bum bum. Freebie, baby. Soft rock. This guy's nuts. Now let's see whether Gin and Tonic's watching the flank. They didn't need to. But it's uh it's it's nice to see that people are working in Paris now and um What's very nice to note also about splitting up is if you can divert the attention, you tend to be able to take more ground, which means uh, take uh, more control of the map. So this is just something to keep in mind. Rather than, you know, five attackers push west and then all five defenders are west and then you're just like stuck in this stalemate, right? Like a congestion until one guy gets a lucky hit shot or something like that. Time for Shoya to sign up for the workshop. I didn't say that. <laughs> but yeah. You want credits? Get credits. Okay, uh, I think there's a few people streaming in, like Wong, to, like, for example. Um, Something to note is if you sign up for this workshop, which Defending is held by Rainbow Six by community, attackers. Singapore's community, and also Scape's community rallies. Um, if you sign up for three of the five workshops, you will be able to win 2,400 in-game Rainbow Six credits for free. Just like that. Boom. Sign up. 3 out of 5. Bam. Participate. I mean, you you don't just sign up and... Good night. Bye-bye. You gotta actually play. You get free credits! Everyone loves credits. You're gonna make friends too. You can be like, Hey, this guy is pretty nice. I'm gonna work with this guy and... We're gonna climb the ranked ladder and be the best duo in the universe. Five seconds to insertion. This game's too tough. It's hard in the start. Attackers Definitely hard in the start. It. But it's very rewarding. It's one of those like hard games where it's like once you understand Ooh, what happening? Once you understand how the game flows, you get a decent grasp of the game, it becomes such a nice curve. It's like the start is like oh it's hard and then once you slowly get the progress, it, whoa, it spikes up. So that that that's like the the best phase when you're playing the game, you know, you get comfortable with everything. Oh, this is interesting. Very interesting. Um, one thing for Sara to note for that kind of um, play is maybe you could have a drone. Let's say you had it where my, I'm looking at right in the middle of the screen. If you had a drone in this hallway, you would be able to, you know, get it like, hey, Fox, can you watch my, uh, my drone? Then when he says, yeah, I'm on it, then you go in. Then that way you will know whether there's a guy streaming into the corridor or not. Free credits, Pokchan! Exactly. Drone is activated. Attackers have located a bomb. Yep, escape. Moderator, thank you, Mr. Botman. Bot. Oh yes, this is the new site. This is a very interesting site. You know. Cabrera has it. Only two operators have it. Oh, this is insane. Mr. Software getting another kill for his team. He's actually doing really well this um this morning together with Wasberry playing together the team. It's very nice to look at. Now let's see. Fox right now is just on the roof. Uh, I would prefer if he was helping his teammates more, and if his teammates could slow down. As you can see right now, they're very individual. Um. When you're playing too much away from each other and not, you know, helping one another, this is um, basically this is a great example why you should communicate with your teammates. Like, um, example, like, dude, I'm on your skylight. I can watch your door on the back. You just need to watch the staircase in front of you. Then um, stuff like that. It becomes a lot better because you'll be able to cover for one another. Like, let's say 
for an example, it would be, um, let's say there's a guy in front and then there's a guy behind. If the guy in front makes noise, the enemy would know, okay, there's at least one guy. So they would send, you know, a couple defenders maybe to flank behind them because they wouldn't know whether there's a second guy. But if you have the second guy as an attacker, right, and you're communicating like, hey, dude, I will, I will watch your flank, you try to make a play. The guy watching the flank would be like, whoa, okay, I got it. And then free kill, man. The the attack the defenders trying to flank, they won't know what you know hit their bum. So Attackers need to locate nice. and defuse as many bombs as they can. Winning matches in this game is so satisfying. Hell yeah, buddy. Ah, here this is very nice to see. So um, you guys saw basically what what's going on. You hear these explosions, boom, bam, bam. Those are impact grenades. So we will be covering more on this in the second half of this session of the workshop. Uh, this is how you make the way you hold a bombsite a lot more dynamic. Basically, instead of having maybe one staircase and one hallway to rotate, now you have a few other sneaky little shortcuts. Based oh. Five oh. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be naughty. Don't be fighting like that. But basically, um... Yeah, opening up rotations, if you can get a better grasp of the map, it's really, 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 really nice. Let's see what the attackers are up to. It looks like they're just going up on the roof. This is standard stuff on the, uh, specifically this map cafe. You always try to have guys on the roof. You gotta open. Oh no, Shoria, please do not open that. Thank you, Shoria, my man. So as you can see, now they're opening up the hatches. This is very nice. Because this is how a uh, normal round would play out. Even at the higher level, usually you would try to go for the top floor first. Interesting. Interesting that he just ran through. In very... Oh no. Okay, right now this is a shield, so basically you can't shoot through it and... Vice versa, you can't shoot when you have the shield. So you know, it's how they choose to balance it. So now we see Yuzri, right? On the great lock, following up Fox. This is very nice to see. That they'll be able to help one another. Um, clear out this soft rock. Where is Sara? Sara's doing big thing. Sara's. Sara's inside. All right. Okay. Now we see that it's all up to Wasberry now. Uh, the defenders made uh, a flaw, as you can see. Um, if you look on the left side, there's the staircase. If there was a barbed wire, which is a gadget, um, very commonly used in Rainbow Six, and most operators have them. It gives you an, a sound indication whether the attackers are rushing up the stairs or not. Dude, this guy's, this guy's crazy. This guy's bolo, dude. What the heck? This guy's nuts. Okay, let's see what's a uh, fox. So right now you see that fox and Yuzri, they're both not working together. Now this is, uh, kind of like a bad mistake to do because let's say Yuzri was ready to help fox. This would be free real estate. It would be, you know, boom, boom, bam, bam. Looks like Yuzri is trying to go for the diffuser instead. You know, makes sense. That's not bad of a plan. Ah, right now, here. It's so good. Very nice. Very nice to see that at the end. But yeah, definitely as a defender, try to make use of uh, your gadgets like barbed wire to slow down enemies and give you a bit of an indication whether they're pushing. Dante, hello. Hello, Dante. 4,000... 22 to the 4 2 2 20 4223 First try We're holding an R6 workshop right now Yes sir We are I'm gonna drink a bit of water Is planting a lot? Yes Oh wait, I'm not paying attention. My brain farted for a second. Uh, yeah. Let me just. Uh, this will be the last round. Attackers okay. need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. Just uh, leave after this, and turn on the stream again. Alright. So we're approaching the end of this practical session. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice. 
So, yeah, uh, as you can see the defenders on this side instead, they like to have a bit more compact strategy. Uh, they're switching it up, they choose not to open too many holes. Which is very nice, this is called, um, for us we call it adaptation, where, you know, we... If something's not working, we need to change something. You know, just adapt along the way, it's, it's very nice to see. Um, definitely do this, if something's not working, don't do it again. Uh, if something's working, you know, you can try it again. Maybe it makes minor adjustments, and that's about it. Not respecting what the attackers seem to be doing. Now, tentatively, no one seems to be set on a specific role except for Fox right now. Um, which is fine. It's always good to just test out new things. So now we hear the shield coming up. That's another thing. Um, shields are very loud. So is that. That's Fuse. It's from Alice's operator. So uh, what makes shields so strong is that you cannot be shot and you're able to give your teammates free information as long as there's no you know, defenders following up behind you. So that's why shield operators are very 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 strong. Ooh! I was just talking about how shields are good and he did. He did. But yeah basically it gives you free information and... Attackers recovered the diffuser. Okay. It gives you free information. So yeah, that's why it's good. Actually, in local context, the strongest team now in Apex North, the captain, IGL, Lunar Mantle. Oh no! He is one of the best shield players. Period. So yeah. Man's insane. So it seems that this guy's trying to flank, but uh, it's a bit slow, but definitely you know, it's at least coordinated together with Strawberry, so that's very nice to see. Um, Shoria, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be very in sync with everyone else, which um, in most situations can be a bit of a problem because it's a lot better to work with your teammates rather than always trying to go for individualistic plays. Even if you want to be an individual and like, hey, I'm just going to go in, I'm going to bam, 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 bam. It's always good to have like a teammate to at least drone you, give you and feed you like um, live information. This is why droning is a lot of importance and a heavy portion of this game. I'm not gonna go too in detail what makes a good droner, uh, at least on this session. So tune into the fuel. Nice shot. Tune into the future sessions definitely, and you know maybe I'll go in deeper. So yeah, um. Even on rank, this is a small tip to those people who are aspiring to rank up. This across the board applies to everyone, which is... If you have teammates who are a bit uncooperative, uh, try to figure out how you can put them into a position where they can get more kills. So let's say you have a, you know, an Ash player. Oh no! Okay. Let's say you have an Ash player who likes to just rush. Maybe you can say, hey Ash, I'll put a drone here and I'll watch it for you as you go. Something like that. Giants gaming, woo 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 woo. Glenn's just the better version of me, man. I mean, Lunar Mental. Y'all don't call him Glenn. Never mind. But yeah, you'll get a point. GG. Tune in to stream. All right. Now, as we go to the slides for the second portion, let me just quickly switch it up to here. So now the practical session this one is done. I'll just give it maybe a minute. I'll give it a minute for everyone to come back. Whoever's gridlock is sneaky. I forgot who is. I think it's. I don't remember. Get shotgun boom. I'm gonna get some skate points in the meantime. Oh, claim that bonus plus fifty, baby. Let's go. All right. Uh, we'll wait. For everyone to come in slowly, slowly. It looks like people are streaming in. Feels like I'm taking my PSLE again. Monka S dude. Hopefully you did well on your PSLE. Wait till your O's or something. Assuming that you have not done it. I'm just gonna drink water as you guys stream in slowly. Drink up, drink up. Everyone drink water. Don't be hydrated. I got a nice keychain. Not sponsored, it's from a Japan trip. Got it from a gacha thingy. 
All right, looks like um, most of the people are in. Let's progress on to the next section. Part two. Everyone claps in the chat. I don't know if there's the emote, but claps in the chat. All right. Part two. Maximizing your drone and prep phase. Ah, you see, this is um, basically for those who are in the participating in the games. I was talking uh, briefly about this. And yes, so now we'll be talking a little bit more. Nice emote. So for the attacking side, uh, this is basically how you do it, where, you know, in the droning phase, you would want to find where's the bomb site so that you can, you know, position yourselves a bit better. You can decide mm. where you want to spawn better. You can, you know, whatever suits that bomb site that you found. Uh, give information to the rest of the team. This is across the board, basically, and try to save your drones. Don't just, you know, throw your drone in for the sake of throwing your drone in. Sometimes you can just be like, hey, I'm going to save my drone. I'm not going to find a bomb. I'm just going to wait outside and pick it back up later on when the round starts. It's fine. As long as you're using it, you know, as you move on, like, uh, as you approach, like, the later phases, like the mid-round, basically, which is... Mid-round basically means when... How do I explain mid-round? Mid-round is basically when the round started, right? But like, that's when the action really happens. That's mid-round. So it's like the action phase, basically. Now for the defending, uh, you choose to reinforce uh, stuff, create rotations. And um, this is something that uh, just, I think now that the people and the participants were inside, this is something that y'all should uh, try to do in future is uh, make use of your utility more, like your barbed wire. I think some of you guys can pick operators with barbed wire instead of everyone on impacts stuff like that try to have barbed wires on like staircases you know hallways so that you can get more information about you know your general space in the bomb site uh also have teammates watch different angles try not to have like five guys watching one door try to you know be a bit more spread out and if you're example alone and you're against five attackers you know tell your team hey i think they're pushing me heavy i'll just fall back everyone okay Drones are basically kamikaze pilots. They're not supposed to be. They can be. They're not supposed to be. Try to use it. Even if you lose your drone, try to make it so that um, you get an information call out or you have a teammate able to make use of the call. Like, hey, there's a guy behind that shelf, but you already have a guy peeking it. So that would be very nice to see. Let's move on. Uh, strap C4. <laughs> I wish that worked, my man. All right. Basics of positioning. Now, this is something the um, I hope you all can try in the next practical session because um, some of you like to expose yourself a bit too much. Like when you're peeking a door, try not to just walk into the door blindly, you know, or at the same time, if there's a hallway, don't just walk in the middle of the hallway. Try to stick to the sides, stuff like that. And um, small tip, small tip right now is it's not in the slides. Uh, general rule of thumb is the further you are from a corner, the more you see of the enemy. What I mean is, let's say you're both peeking a doorway. If you're further from the door, you will see the guy behind the door earlier than he sees you because he's close to the door. Just a small tip to throw in. Um, another very important thing. This one's um, to both the attacking and defending sides. I'm not going to point names, but I think definitely um, try to work more with your teammates. Don't just enter alone. As an attacker, don't just fight people alone as a defender. Try to have, try to position. So for attackers, for example, maybe you want to rush a site. Maybe you can, after you droned it, right, you can have like, you can call your teammate. Let's say my teammate's Fox. I can be like, hey, Fox, can you watch my drone? And when he'll go like, yeah, okay, I'm on it already. Then that's when you push up. So if, you know, if anyone seems to come across that drone, Fox will be like, hey, there's one in the hallway now. Then at least you'll be able to get live information you won't be like startled out of knowing how did this guy get here you know this kind of things for uh, the defenders uh try to position yourselves you yourself there's no droning right so try to position yourself so that if your teammate dies you are able to immediately cover up so let's say defender one dies to attacker one defender two is near enough to kill off attacker one if i'm talking too fast just tell me slow down chill I'm not from Ireland. Alright, next. <laughs> that was, oh wait, that's so fast. Wait a second. I think we can have a bit of a breather. I honestly need to go and urine, but I'm not sure if I can. So, I'm, <laughs> um, if you guys have any questions, throw it down. Oh, since everyone in the participants is here in now, if you guys have any questions about settings, ask me. 
So um, today, basically, um, if you have any questions, try to keep it within today's topic, which is mostly on settings and positioning. Um, try not to ask anything outside of those topics. If you're curious on what those are, sign up for the workshops. If not, you know, tune into the stream. If you're not free, maybe you're only free one of two hours. You can always just tune into the stream. Just uh, try to talk within the within the topic so that we don't overlap stuff. I haven't finished taking down notes. Uh. Ah, feel free to write down now. But if anything, also you can always uh go back to the vod. This vod, like this escape vod, it'll be saved for I think three months because it's a partnered channel. So you know the broadcast will be saved. You don't really have to worry about anything. If not, you can just you know write a timestamp. But yes, if y'all have questions about settings, because personally, I think there's a lot to cover for settings. Uh, considering, are we on task? We are on task. Where do you sign up for the topic? F sign up for the workshop. Maybe Fox or one of the moderators can link it, maybe? There we go. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Bentilis. Uh Alice, how do you push a bomb site? How do you push? Alright, so how do you push a defend if a man is down? Considering we play a bit of practical, maybe we can test it on next one, which is um Usually when you're a man down, let's say you're defending and you're in a 2v5 situation, something I suggest is try to create a play. Like uh what I mean by make a play is that's when what word will not get me banned? Um, try to make a play that's not... That, that's when you throw in the stupid plays, right? Like the out-of-the-normal, like... Crazy plays? Uh, what are my settings? Uh, okay, since we have a... I think I will spend about... Let's see... I have till 2pm. Our practical ended in about 30 minutes. I will start... Practical at 1.25-ish? Okay, let me let me uh let me finish up uh, that question on the um if you're man down and then I'll go through what I personally use in my settings. After that, I will go into I will go into my Oh, we'll go into the practical after the sorry, after the let me get the word down. After I go through my settings. So yeah. When you're man down, that's when you try to make a bit more risky and bold plays because uh, something I do personally with my team, so this even applies at higher rank, is try to... Um, you can't just wait, because if you're 2v5, as I said, if the attackers are very coordinated, come in one, one die, second immediately covers up. So it's very hard to play if you're a man down. So usually when you're a man down, that's when you catch the enemy off guard. Because try not to let the example you're defending and you're two people try not to let the attackers set up. Don't let them be able to position all five guys correctly. Don't let them be able to position the smokes, the diffuser, where they want to plant. Don't let them set up yet. Try to break that pause and create a play. So what I mean by create a play is push them or like um start peeking a bit more. Just create noise, create a bit of pressure. As long as you give them pressure, they won't know whether they'll be able to plant. Or like set up right so you just keep on adding pressure when you're man down don't 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 like um just sit down and do nothing you'll end up losing that way can i know which chair you're using bro i'm changing chair soon but uh my chair is it's a thrown out office chair from my mom's office so let's uh let's go through a bit of my settings i'll go through my settings for about yeah if anyone wants to buy me a chair I'll take it. Alright, so... <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please don't send me a chair out of nowhere. But, uh, yeah, I'll just go through my settings for maybe... 3 minutes? 3-5 minutes within this time for those other participants. Uh, you can use this as a water break, toilet break. I will probably, after I host the lobby, I will go for a short um, toilet break. I'll come back and start the game and everything will be on task. So, I think I have my game open now, yes. Um, if there's any questions from now onwards, uh, try to answer a bit later on so that, you know, the chat doesn't flood in and I can keep track of everything. So now it's 1.22. Yep, I'll go through it in about three minutes. So 
these don't uh, matter so much. Um, oh yeah, if you want to take pictures, take pictures. If you don't want to take pictures, you can always refer back to the broadcast in the Twitch VOD. So pinging, turn it on. It may be annoying sometimes that your team is a pinging the universe, but turn it on, really, it's huge. Display game info, you don't have to. It covers up a bit of space in this bottom left portion of the screen where my cursor is. Have it if you want to. I personally don't use it. Cycle camera groups, turn that off. Preference. This is very much preference. Drone after prep. Um, this is for attackers where when you're droning, um, basically, how do I put this? Uh, you know how sometimes when you're droning and once the um, droning phase is over, you will immediately switch to your player and you'll leave your drone wherever it is. So by turning it on to manual, you will stay on your drone even after this droning prep phase. So I personally think it's very nice in case you're running from an enemy and boom, oh no, ah, oh, now I'm back to my character. I can't, oh, then you lose your drone. So personally, if you can get used to the manual control, I highly suggest you do it. PC chat channel, that's up to you. If you want to type good night when you uh, kill someone, it's up to you. Volume, um, a good gauge for volume, subtitle, leave it off. But if you're volume, right, um, this is how I suggest. If you're playing with friends especially, try to be able to put your volume in a way that you can hear gunshots, hear footsteps, but at the same time, not too loud where you can't hear your teammates because it's very important that you hear your teammate and you're giving each other information. Music is up to you. Dialogue volume, I recommend you put that at 100 because uh, there's a weird sound thing in Rainbow Six where you need to put your dialogue as high as possible so you can hear footsteps clearer. Am I on time? Yes, I'm sick. Rapper. So dynamic range, I highly, highly, highly suggest night mode. Night mode basically makes your soft sounds softer and your louder, uh, no. What am I saying? Wait, yeah, soft sounds. Basically, you hear more. The range, the range is like, wider you can differentiate sounds much better voice chat volumes up to you all this rest does not matter now for display settings only for today i'm on 16.9 so that i can spectate but in most of the case i'm usually playing 4.3 personally 4.3 i am playing with off off field of view i usually set it between 80 to about 85 is my maximum brightness is personal preference but yeah for today i will just be using 69 i highly suggest if you're curious you can try out 4.3 a lot of the competitive players play on 4.3 um it makes your screen a bit stretched out horizontally while squishing the vertical so if that's for you definitely play around the settings um these are the graphics I use. Uh, I don't want to go through this too long because this is um, quite a heavy portion. If you have any questions, write it in the chat. If not, if you have my Discord because you're a participant, uh, feel free to DM me and I'll get back to you at the end of the workshop. So um, I basically use custom, medium, linear, ultra. If you don't know what specific settings do, uh, tag me in the Twitch chat. That's what I use. LOD makes it so you can see things further. Just saying. It renders the object even though it's far. Basically, that's what goes on. Shadow, uh, shadow basic, uh, oops. Shadow, you try to have it medium. Low makes it off. In this game, low is off. Just saying. For most of the settings. Set it to medium. Shadow is quite important. If you have a good computer, set it to high. Is higher FPS or V-Sync with 60? Uh, higher FPS. You always want to have a smoother game compared to a prettier game. At least in um, most contexts for shooting pew pew bang bang games. Try to have it so that your game runs smoothly instead of you know just having it look pretty. How much FPS am I getting? I tend to be able to get about 160, 180 stable. Hi Kiyoshi, what's up? All right, without further ado, Fox, can you set up the dudes in the chat? Let's see if everyone's inside. If you can set them up, it'd be very nice. Am I able to adjust bit rate? Uh, give me a sec. Let's see. Is the camera still lagging like crazy?
Only in game has a drop. Oh, oh shit! Zzzz. When am I cutting my hair? I'm cutting tomorrow. We grow through this first. Um, okay. That explains why I'm always lagging. Huh. Sure, yeah. Alright, alright, Winsless, I see the message. In this case, I'll set up the custom first. Um, if you guys have uh, final questions as I'm setting up and as people will be streaming in, uh, write down now, I guess. Like on the, especially on, based off the topics. Like the second part, basically, as I said, the second part focuses more on positioning. Try not to be too open and definitely work more with your teammates. I would suggest, um, as you're still learning the game, try to pair up. Pair up. Can you play in Europe servers? Bruh. 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 Invited. Can I be with Javier? Javier? It's up to you, dude. Just uh, message our sick. Ah, uh, the fox. Hipster fox. He'll probably say yes, anyways. To Fox, I have invited you. Um, I'll be inviting those that I have. And uh, give me a moment. Okay, most of you have been invited. Just join in, stream in. Um, Fox, you can invite the rest. Uh, I'll get. I'll be back in a minute. Just give me when everything comes back, when everyone's in, I will start the lobby for now. I will just go on a short toilet break in just like 30 seconds. So yeah, I hope you guys don't mind. Um, feel free to continue writing down questions and I will just get back to you immediately when I come back. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. I don't think I'll be playing music. Y'all can imagine there's music. Ooh, I love that song. I'm not even going to sing the song because copyright. Yeah, I love that song. Oh, yeah, same. I love that song. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, 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 I'm back, baby. Am I pretty? Do I still look pretty, boys? Let's post PP play box. Look pretty. Triple P. Looks like we're waiting in for the last, last man, last mate. Is the group set up yet? Teams, 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 teams. Let's see. Let's look at the teams. Yeah. Are the teams set up? Yes, I'll probably be increasing my bit rate soon. Uh, if possible, if you guys have any suggestions, what bit rate to set it, I could change it now, maybe. See, is it still lagging? Is it that bad? I was told it was pretty bad. Give me a moment.
what's the bit rate at it now? It's not lagging now, but when I was in game, it was lagging. Um, mm. Fox, as usual, if you can tell me in the Twitch chat when everything's settled, it'd be nice. Green thumbs. Green thumbs means go. Go, go. It looks pixelated when in game. Ah, yeah, that that was, I was getting that feedback. Hey, oh, I'm playing. I'm playing the wrong map. I hope you guys don't mind though. Wrong map. Sorry, but just continue. Three, thousand five hundred. All right, I'll try that. Maybe next workshop later on. Alright, uh, if there's anything massively too laggy or something, uh, we'll figure it out as we go, I guess. Hopefully it's a bit better. Hopefully. Let's go. Attackers need to locate and so now coastline bomb. is a bit more of the unique maps, which is why I initially didn't really want to play it. But I guess it's good as well that people, you know, get to try new things, try new maps. It's always very good to experience stuff Attackers so that you can improve more. So let's see. Now this drone by Rain is um, interesting. You tend not to want to just throw your drones and lose it in like four seconds. Ten seconds Thank you for the follow. Yeah, so it looks like the defenders choose to hold hookah Five side, which is quite remaining. a default side. As you can see, there's a hole. Now that's a rotation. It's very nice to see that they're making use of that feature. They didn't really do that much in the previous map, so it is nice that they're you know paying a bit more attention to how to properly set up the stuff. Uh, one feedback would be that they're still playing too much on one side. It's very one-dimensional where they are pushing five guys all on the west side. You usually try to have other people elsewhere to create a bit of um, commotion, like a bit of noise to distract the defenders. Uh, interesting C4. Usually, I wouldn't recommend it because it's very likely it's not successful most of the time. The stream's grimy? Ah oh, man, it's happening again. Sorry, it's probably the bitrate. That's my that's on me, I think. Changing move out. Yikes. I'll probably have to adjust the settings. If my volume and voice is still working, I hope I hope it is, but if possible I will fix it uh, soon. Alright, the voice is fine. All right. I'll try not to be switching screens too much, so hopefully it won't be too bad. Alright. So now, as you can see, everyone's still pushing in from the west side. So, it's not too bad considering at least uh, they're pairing up. Very nice from Wasby. Um... Playing it with the flow, right? This is this is um what I was trying to say also, which is trying to get a lead, right? They're trying to get a bit of a gap, try to pick off enemies so that you can get that little bit of an advantage. Huge. He can wall bang that. But whatever. Now we see now now um that they're in a mancon at disadvantage for the defending side, like as for Alice and Strawberry. This is a position where they really need to engage in play because as you've just heard, the diffuser has been planted. And in most cases, you would really not want that to happen as a defender. You would try to create noise so that, um, well, the attackers just can't, won't be able to just get like a free plant or stuff like that. Because right now, it's going to be very, very hard for Strawberry. Like, even if she picked off this last player, the Kali, or R6SC underscore Fox. It's still very unlikely that I should be able to win considering that the rest of the attackers are already positioned to cover the bomb that's been planted, so... Yeah. Yeah, I apologize for the grainy image.
Yeah, so um, one thing to note also previously was when when uh, Fox was playing, he was making use of the wall, as you saw when he was repelling. He didn't just like swing in and play in the middle of the balcony. He tried to cover himself a bit more behind that little ledge. So you know, th stuff like this is pretty important because the le the lesser you expose your own body to the enemy, uh, the less likely you are to be punished. Like you, you probably won't be shot dead because it's a bit harder to kill you because there's lesser, you know, space, right? Lesser surface area to shoot. Attackers need to locate and defuse bomb. So, for, oh, sorry. For a general rule of thumb, you just try to make use of things like cables, make use of walls, um, even the bomb. Um, or reinforcements like these are one of the better ones where you choose where you want to reinforce and make use of it. Like, uh, if you reinforce a specific wall, maybe you can try playing behind that wall because the enemies won't be able to just shoot through and you won't get wall banged. You're basically quite safe. So in, you tend to want to be able to make use of your surroundings like right now you would see where Alice is she's probably going to be ending up using this countertop as a bit of cover from the enemy and I think that would really be very important uh, moving forward to see whether you can win gunfights because most of the time if you are able to expose yourself lesser you win majority I would say majority of your gunfights so just try to Keep that in mind when you're playing. Like right now you see Hipster Fox playing behind this little ledge, getting a bit of an advantage. And as you can see right now, Shoria getting the first pick because he's able to use that small box. Attackers drop the diffuser. See, even another example here, Alice being able to use this little blue countertop as a bit of cover to um, lesser his exposure. So that it's less likely for him to get spotted, let alone get shot at. So it's very nice. Interesting. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Okay, looks like everyone's back. So now this drone from Softrock, he's able to identify there's a guy behind the couch, which means they're probably gonna go for a setup soon enough. But Wasbu being able to get a kill completely destroys this um, flow, right? So this is what I mean by when your man count down, you try to create a play, try to make something happen rather than just wait. Now this is a bit of over aggression. But if it works, everything will be fine. So this is very nice to see from Soft Rock. He set up a bit of a, a mini cross fire angle, and this is something that you know everyone should try to adopt. Being able to cover for one another is definitely huge skill in this game. Massa's crazy. This crack. So in situations like these, um, for Rin, for example, she actually still has two drones. She has grenades. Um, what she can do is, um, well, this tends to be in the wrong order, but what I would suggest is that she would use her drones. At least try to locate where the last enemy is. Hopefully you all can see the image clear enough. That once she spots out the enemy, she could probably leave a drone in that corner on a couch, something to just watch that hallway so that her dead teammates are able to feed her information like hey he rotated off or like hey he's still behind the counter stuff like that then that way Rin will be able to use her grenades and you know stuff like that it'll be very nice to see it looks like she's deciding to just push the complete other side which is also you know fair play but as you can see right now she does not have um, any information even though she has a drones and this is why she's Unable to be able to, she's unable to decide where exactly would be the best, you know, course of action, to, what course of action to take, or like where should she actually push. I mean, this is just one of the few reasons why information is very, very, very important in Rainbow Six, especially where if you don't have information, you tend to play very slow, and you know, like the two minutes plus of the round, like two minutes forty-five seconds ish, three minutes of the round seems to just it just seems to fly and then the next thing you know you're 20 seconds left and you know that's when you struggle a lot with the managing what you should actually do because you know the time will add on quite a bit of stress but that was a good attempt the attackers should definitely continue to do what they did in a, in a sense just be a bit more coordinated and be able to um, trade for one another 
like make use of your teammate like if your teammate dies immediately have a second guy to follow up rather than just um wait and have your entire strategy crumble I should stop moving so much on my chair because the my bitrate's already not great. So now let's see what the attackers do with their drones. For the most part, they should be trying to just positioning and, and save it rather than just drone in. Bomb Looks like Softrock's gonna do it. Now this is something I don't um, really suggest like from Shoria and Softrock as you can see the drones. Usually you try not to just throw your drone into a bomb site for the sake of it. You try to just, you know, drone, find out, you know, general gist of where they seem to be playing from and then maybe gauge, oh, they're playing a castle, oh, they're playing a pulse, this kind of thing. But you don't really want to just throw in your drone for free, let's see what sort. Oh, this is nice though. If you can get your drone into a bomb site and position it in um, where you saw that on the shelf and the defenders aren't aware, that's very good. As long as you're not just using a drone and losing it for free, it's it's all you need to do really. Hi Quack! Analyzing? Nah dude, this is just a bit of basics, you know, just covering a bit of basics, but welcome to the stream dude. Sorry for the grainy stuff, but yeah. Hopefully at least people can learn a bit. So now we can see that the defenders are quite stacked up on site while the attackers are very 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 slip split up looks like Shory is trying to go for a bit of an individual play it looks like this is actually the first bit of contact for Jin and Tonic right now I suggest not playing like this because he has no information where the Kevera is or his flank so um, as I've said earlier if you're positioned safely like if you're positioned behind a box or on, le on like a balcony right and you have a teammate droning or you are droning and you have a teammate watch the drone it will definitely good night you'll definitely be much um safer like, basically try to position yourself in a way where you won't be punished so easily by uh, being by exposing yourself to too many angles like front back you know vertical whatever right try to position a bit safer so like um as you saw previously Try to make use of the bomb or the ledges as a bit of cover. Or in this case, if you have a Montane, which is like a shield operator, you can use the shield as a bit of cover. Which is what Softrock just did there behind, which is very nice. Uh oh. Huge. So this is one of the downsides of being a shield operator. As you can see, uh, when you're alone, it's very hard to win because the moment you de-shield, you expose yourself, so, yeah. Let's see. Is it too late to join? I, I unfortunately deserted. it. But, yeah, Escape Esports, the... Just said, we still have four more workshops for this beginner course. We still have four more workshops on the 15th of August, 29th of August, 26th September, and 3rd October. If you have to pick that out again, just clip it or something but yeah we'll still be having workshops and also if you sign up for at least three of the workshops and you participate you can win 2400 in-game rainbow six credits like that like boom credits freebie let's see attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can yep we're gonna have an advanced workshop soon enough as well yeah Think they'll be able to give you the links and stuff, so um, hopefully they'll be able to do that for me. I'm gonna get some elite skins, yummy, yummy. So uh, let's see how the defenders are choosing to set up this time. Uh, looks like they're trying to go for very basic. You know, they just use reinforcements. Um, something I would like to suggest, like moving on from part one, um, is making use of your rotations like you really need to open up Attackers holes open a bit of line of sight so what line of sight is it means angles like right now as you can see from massa this is very nice you make it making the site a bit more dynamic having more space to create plays this is something that's very nice to learn and it makes it a lot easier to position yourself which is onto our next topic right which is being able to make use of specific tables and angles 
to hold a certain space safer but also better in a way. So now it looks like they're trying to go for a lobby take. Now we don't really see that happen too often but you know it's fine they're still learning it's alright. And it looks like the defenders choose not to roam too much except for Wasbu I think. So it looks like this slow this round's running quite slow except for Fox now pushing in here. But something that I really like to see is as you can see Jin and Tonic is playing as a pair with Fox. So even if the shields man manages to spot out a, sp a player, Jin and Tonic will be able to immediately catch up and you know make make it work, make something work, right? So now we see Shori again trying to make a bit of solo engagements. Um, in most situations, that's good. However, if you're not being able to draw in the attention of the defenders, then there is no point. So I would suggest you just play with your teammates if your defenders aren't, you know, caring whether you're pushing alone or not. Just a suggestion. So it looks like they're just gonna shoot the cam. Rin's a bit slow. Uh, she's now left alone. So um, definitely, if she could play behind teammates. Definitely be much better. As you can see, Softrock playing behind a Monty, she was able to gra uh, grab them a kill. So yeah, that's what I mean by being able to play behind your teammates. Now something to note here, if this flashbang clears... Oh, they're just having white screen, baby. Now right here, as you can see, Masa now playing behind this little bit of couch and speakers is keeping him safe from everything. Like the flashbangs, everything is keeping him safe, but the moment he steps out, he gets punished. So this is just, you know, typical stuff. Just try to always make use of your environment. Flashbang. Now let's see what Alice is up to. Are you trying to go for a flanky flanks? Oh, oh no. Now this is a, this is a toughie. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as you can see, like, for the attacking side, they'll be playing behind this montane, the shield, and by playing behind that shield, they'll be able. They were able to grab, you know, two, three kills. I think within that game, they were able to grab. I think Jin and Tonic was able to grab two, and someone else grabbed one. So definitely by engaging in team play and um, positioning yourself in a way that, let's say, the shield player goes, "Hey, there's a guy right in front of me." Then the guy behind will be able to immediately make use of that knowledge and information. Um, because he's positioned in such a manner where he's close enough to make use of the information without any delay. And this would definitely catch a, a, a defenders off guard. They say when Lunar Mental retracts his shield, he becomes a god. Not wrong. Legend has it that even with his shield up, he's already insane. He's one of the best. Dude's crazy. So it looks like they're changing up the bomb sites. Uh, it's pretty good. Good to see that they are because um, if something's not working out, switch up. You know, some stuff like that. Play what fits you. Really. I would say a general guideline is pick what um is generally understood as the best bomb sites. And if you have a set group of friends and you have you know specific strategies, then from there. You can branch more into the pick what works for your team rather than what works in general. So let's see what the def attackers are up to this time. Looks like they're playing very split up, which it's not a bad idea. They're playing in parasol three and two right? so it's all right to see that. The defenders seem to just be playing heavier on side. So oh. That's a very nice shot. Who was that? Shoria! Wow! Look at this man. This guy's crazy. So I, I don't suggest you playing that aggressive peeking angles like that uh, every time. But definitely by doing it once in a while, you... You know, you can... What do you, what? Add pressure for future rounds because they'll keep it in mind like, Oh, I shouldn't do this again because the enemy just peeked me. So that's also a bit of positioning in, a, in the way that... Don't be so stale, right? Like, if you're always playing behind us, this example, you're playing behind the same table every round and it's not working, try to switch it up. Try to play either an odd angle, 
or you know maybe instead of behind a table you play behind the bomb or behind a bookshelf stuff like that try to make use of the environmental like furniture and fixtures to like um position yourself better oh this is a bit awkward so it looks like this round is running a bit slow i think the defenders are just staying on site. Very nice from Gin and Tonic. But yeah, it looks like the... Let's see, is that the IQ? IQ seems to be pushing alone right now. Oh, wait, no. Okay, with Wasby. So this is very good to see that they're playing up in pairs. It looks like Wasby is trying to go in for a play. I don't really suggest this because um, he's not the one with the diffuser. If he had the diffuser, he'd be able to get a plant down. But it looks like they're calling on Strawberry. Please plant behind it. Yes. Very nice. So this is very good to see that Wasby is covering very oh almost. So as you can see, these two players that I'm spectating now, they were positioned correctly. Now it's all up to Masa, of course. But if you guys uh, managed to pay attention to what exactly happened there, you would see that the IQ Masa was watching the flank, which was in the hallway behind them, while Wasby is watching all the rotations so that Strawberry was able to. Uh, plant the diffuser. Um, of course, they lost the gunfight in the end, but definitely um, it was the correct intention. But maybe for Wasbu, if he's able to listen into this later on, um, and I'll definitely inform him in private, maybe. But if he was maybe positioned behind a wall, as I s I've been um, talking about, and it's the main focus for this part two session. If you're positioned behind a wall, you tend to have a bit of an advantage because you're exposing yourself a bit less. Like the enemy would only be able to see your head but you'll be able to see their entire body which means it's a lot a lot easier for you to shoot them down rather than you know the other way around uh. attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can so it looks like they're going in penthouse Alright, so uh, what would be interesting here is if we see them changing anything up. They definitely changed up a bit of their operator roles, so hopefully we get to see something a bit um, unique with how they choose to hold it. Let's see what this drone will do for Wasby. This is very nice to see from Wasby. You get information and then you just hide your drone. There's no need to engage in further contact. The points don't matter. Five seconds left before insertion. So yeah, it looks like the the way that the attackers are putting their uh, drones was definitely much better than the previous round we've seen. So yeah, maybe we can, hopefully we see more of that. Uh, it looks like they're going in very solo individualistic plays from the attacking side. So as long as they are coordinated, um, it should be fine. It should be worth. Um, Rin, as you can see, oh no, there we go, she's using her utility, very nice. Shoria, Shoria is crazy aggressive on this one. Very nice pick from Shoria. You see, um, in terms of positioning for that one, um, what Alice should have done, especially because she had the diffuser, was instead of breaking the barricade straight on, maybe she could have shot it from afar, or tap it in a in the just the corners of the the wall so that she's exposing lesser of herself. So this is a bit aggressive, but um, by adding pressure. Now the attackers are a bit more pressured to slow down and um, try not to take the, the room too fast. So this delays a lot of time and as a defender, the more time you have, the bigger the advantage in 90% of the situations. Launching override. Not sure. Now this is a nice pick from Soft Rock. But yeah, it looks like the attackers are very split up. Like as you can see, Masa now engaging in a very individual play. But you know, it's because he's alone that Soft Rock didn't even know that he was there in the first place. So it's good timing. Oh! 
However, right now, I think it'd be very good if we see the attackers um, play more together. Right now, they, they are all very split. As you can see, one's now up there on the top right, one's below here who's getting flanked, and the other is in this hallway. So, put on this personally, if they were um, maybe more, more compact, like more positioned closer together, they'll be able to watch each other's flanks. And, um, oops. They position better in a sense where they watch each other flanks while at the same time being able to push together, trade one another, and engage in team play. Uh, right now, Master's still playing very individual. He's definitely got a few picks, which is insane, but most situations you would be punished for playing alone like that. seconds to go. And as you can see, as I said earlier, if you're a defender and you choose to play with the time by positioning yourself in a safe manner, you are able to really um, trickle down the time and the next thing you know, the attackers won't have enough time to you know position themselves to engage in a team play or position themselves to execute for a bomb site. So definitely one thing is that they need to... Um, be able to stick closer together or at least work in pairs and cover one another. So, yeah. Now, as they tune in back into the stream, I will be going over to give me a second. Boom, bop, my face is back. All right, let's try to keep it a bit. Uh, let, let's try to keep it a bit. Um, on time, I, yeah, let's try to shorten things down a bit. Why coastline? One is because it's a smaller map and, you know, if they can just position themselves a bit better because there's, you know, quite a few shelves and stuff, maybe that would be better. And actually, we at first wanted cafe. I just decided, to, I just um misclicked it to be very honest with you, but yeah. But definitely coastline, it's not too bad a map, I feel. It's small, it's easy to learn. I will give this another like uh, 20 seconds. Yeah, I'll give it 20 seconds and I will begin again. And then I'll try to keep things a bit brief because I think some of you are a bit hungry from lunch. So, yeah. I got ribs for lunch. I just need to eat later. So as everyone's trickling back in. Another maybe 10 seconds. This concise map, big rooms, open space, a lot of angles. Yes. All right. Looks like for the most part, most people are back in. So I'll just give a very brief run through again of the positioning thing. So basically um, for the participants, uh, if you want, you can go back in the VOD and watch what I had to say while spectating. Um, if not, if you have any questions, you can always DM me and I'll reply after the thing or write it now in the chat. So general rule of thumb, try not to expose yourself too much. I saw some of you, um, you guys were really just standing in the middle of hallways, in the middle of um, doorways. Try to minimize the amount of um, area you expose yourself, like uh, play behind tables, play behind shelves. Some of you did that, which was very nice. And I definitely see a lot more team play, which is good. Uh, but definitely try to continue to stick together and play in pairs rather than engage in a lot of solo activity. I think that's the general thing. Try to position yourself so that um, you can help your teammate watch their flank or you can push together. I think things like this is very important uh, for positioning because it helps your teamwork. So yeah, you're going to definitely win more if you can play together with your teammates. So uh, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to write it down now. I actually don't have anything uh, more to say. So um, for now, we probably have a bit of a QA, and a like maybe two to three minutes. If you have anything, just drop it down right now. And um, let's see, is there anything? Am I single? I've been single 18 years, buddy. All right, coastline. All right, is there any other questions? I don't think there's any other questions yeah. All right, I'll just uh, give a bit how to not salt when you get bad in games. Just realize, just know that, you know, you're always learning, right? Um, one thing I like to do when I used to solo queue in ranked is uh, try not to expect your teammates to play the way you want them to play, right? Um, 
maybe you can try playing lion or something to help them uh, play better, right? Like, if they are not going to listen, just make it so that they can play better for themselves. Uh, about tilting, it's, um, it's, it's a process, I guess. If you, as long as you tell yourself you're still learning, I think it's, it's, it's definitely better, right? And it's definitely much easier to control yourself than control someone else. So yeah, definitely just focus on that, I think. Just know what's your objective, right? And if your objective is just to practice the game, learn, uh, train your individual skill, then just focus on that. Don't, don't focus too much on other people. Perfectly on time, it's 2pm. Hell yeah, dude, I'm a pro with it, bro. No, but I still have a bit of things to say. Definitely, but yeah, we're definitely closing off slowly. When using the deployable shield for cover, is it better to put it on the opposite direction? Uh, personally, you don't have to. Um, most of the times, you wouldn't need it. If I'm being honest. I, it's, it's not too important. You can experiment because diff it, it depends on the angle that you you plan to watch with your shield. But for the most part, if you're just looking straight, it does not make a difference. Uh, let's see. I'll answer a bit more and then I will give a final, you know, thingy and we'll be good. Yeah. Okay, let's start with... Uh, I always have a mental reset, everyone. That's very nice. That's very good one. Uh, I feel like I'm pressured to do well. Never believe that it just if someone's being toxic to you in the game, just I uh, can always mute them or you know if it's constructive criticism, take it in, right? But yeah, just just be your harshest critic, but don't be too harsh, you know? Everyone learns at a different pace. You don't have to push yourself too much. You learn new things after five years, same here, dude. Just be cool, calm, collected. Hell yeah. Just realize that when you tilt, you tend to play worse, alright? So if your objective is to improve, um, Focus on that. Don't don't think too much. Like, man, I'm definitely not. I'm not getting my kills. Uh, is my droning wrong? It, don't be so stressed. At the end, then you can ask yourself these kinds of questions. Maybe you can work on your droning. Maybe you can work on something. As long as you have uh, objective uh, mindset, like you go into a game knowing that okay, today I'm just gonna practice so and so. F don't focus anything else. Just focus on what you're trying to learn. And as long as you hit your objective, you should be you know a bit more proud of yourself for that. Should I be scared of a level 200 diamond and a level 50 copper? Come on, man. <laughs> I think... Just... It's not need to be scared about anything. Dude. The moment you're scared, you don't play better. You don't play well, so... Just go into the game, fresh mind. Think of how you can win, and that's about it. Uh, if there is no other questions... Okay, thank you from... Thank you, Muzi, for the follow. If there's no other questions... Um... If throughout this broadcast you feel like um, you enjoyed your time here, um, you're very, very, very welcome to just sign up for the workshop. Uh, there's still four more workshops. Um, if you don't know of the dates, it's 15th of August, 29th of August, 6th, 26th September, and 3rd October, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, I'm sure there are links around, so use those. Um, Bonus as well that has recently come up is that if you sign up for at least three of the five, uh, well, right now there's four more workshops. So if you at least sign up for three workshops in total, it does not have to be in any order. So you don't have to worry if you're busy on a certain week. Uh, you can sign up for any of the three of the five. You'll be able to receive 2,400 in-game Rainbow Six credits. So you can buy Elite Skins, Alpha Packs, anything's free as long as you participate in the three of five of the workshops. And... Yeah, if you enjoyed it, definitely sign up for the future workshops. Also pay attention to the Rainbow Six Singapore Community Discord, the R6SC Discord, for any news or events about Rainbow Six in Singapore. And also follow more on Scape's community rallies and follow this channel if you haven't to see you know other workshops like there's um, Mobile Legends or so on and so forth, podcasts. Interesting stuff. should definitely follow. And definitely if you have... You know, any questions, feel free to type it. I'll probably stay in chat for maybe one, two minutes. I'll definitely end this uh, broadcast, but I'll probably reply maybe one, two questions. I see a few, so yeah. But without further ado, yeah, if you've already followed and everything, thank you for watching today. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if there's anything I can work on, feel free to message as well. Uh, I would really appreciate feedback and yeah, hope you enjoyed your time today. And that's all from me, Playbox. 
You can follow my Twitter. It's Playbox E R I N O Playbox Arena. You can follow my Instagram Geraldo G's. Yes, follow Escape, follow R Six SC, and that's all from me. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Peace sign in the chat. Peace sign in the chat. Thank you for joining, everyone. Peace sign in the chat. There's no emojis, so oh, y'all can't see my peace. Bye bye.